condition is not as chronic and they can still walk around and stuff like that, well, we do peritoneal. We do peritoneal dialysis. And this is when we use the abdominal cavity. You can imagine the chest, the abdomen, this is the back, and this is the cavity. The abdominal cavity, the peritoneal cavity. What we do is we have a bag of dialysate. of the solution that's gonna pull all the elements that we don't want from the capillaries that are found within the membrane of the peritoneum. And that catheter is connected to the bag, and there's three phases of, the, of peritoneal dialysis. The first one is the, um, the uh, yeah, what's it called? The administration phase. I can't think of the actual word. Uh, the installation phase, which means the fluid is actually coming down. So you have to warm up the dialysate solution, but not using a microwave. You want to make it relatively warm because if it's too cold, it may cause abdominal cramping and stuff like that. Now, that should take roughly 20 minutes, okay, give or take a few. Roughly 20 minutes, depending on what your book says, follow that guide. But essentially, it takes a little bit for you to, some time for you to fill up the entire abdominal cavity. And then you have the dwell time. The dwell time is talking about how long should the fluid stay in there so it can pull out all the elements that we don't want, right? And so it's supposed to be a total of six to eight hours. But the advantage of peritoneal dialysis is that they don't have to do it right at once. They don't have to do that six to eight hours in one sitting. They can do it spread throughout the day. So like if you have someone who, let's say, a teacher, and I have acute kidney failure or something and I need peritoneal dialysis, I can, while I'm sleeping, I can do it six to eight hours, right? But if that's not an option, then what I can do is I can do it in two hour increments throughout the day to tally up a total of six to eight hours. You guys follow? Mm -hmm. What was that? More convenient. Yeah, it's more convenient. And that's the advantage of peritoneal dialysis, but you have to do it every day, okay? And so after the dwell time, then you have the evacuation period. The evacuation means that you're getting rid of that fluid. And so there should be another little catheter, a little port that goes down. And then you have a little bag where the dialysate solution comes out of it into. What you guys have to consider is the, the color of the of the um, of the effluent, of the solution that's coming out. Is affluent, effluent. And so if it's cloudy or white, you must report it because it indicates the worst thing that's gonna happen with peritoneal dialysis. Do you remember talking about peritoneal dialysis? A little. Okay, I did talk about it. Anyway, <laughs> a little bit. And so what you're considering is the peritonitis. That's gonna be your, your, your main issue that you're considering and that you're assessing for. This is why if the patient has like a cold or something, they should wear gloves, a mask when they're partaking in this type of care. The patient will be able to do this on their own. If they're ambulatory, that means that they're more autonomous and more independent, they can do it on their own. And that's the advantage of this whole thing. So you report any cloudy, any white um, effluent, any of that fluid that comes out. For the first week when they instill that catheter, there may be a little leakage, that's okay. But after a week, there should be no more leakage and you wanna report that. Uh, you wanna observe for any indications of peritonitis, which is a, a hard, board-like abdomen. Okay. Uh, tenderness in the abdomen. Any indication of infection? Uh, high white blood cell count, fever, things like that. I'm sorry. Uh, what, did, what is the cloudy and white fluid? This means that there's an infection. Infection. Yeah, this what is, should it look like? Which should, it should be either clear or like a pale yellow color. Clear, yeah. Okay, and that's expected. Um, keep in mind that sometimes when you're evacuating the fluid, the volume of fluid that you instill will not match the volume that's coming out. That's a problem. You must reposition the patient at some point to get that fluid, that get the effluent out. Does that make sense, guys? So the affluent, the effluent, that's what we call, that's what we call the fluid. Um, I think that's pretty much sums up the peritonitis. Now, if the, you understand that you have all the intestines in here, right? You have the intestines, you have all the viscera, you have the stomach, you have all the organs. So if the patient has any issues that like colitis or any inflammatory issue of the intestine, we can't do peritoneal dialysis. Does that make sense, guys? 
So that's what you really want to consider. If the patient has any chronic bowel inflammatory issues, we can't do this because it's going to cause issues. And so does that make sense, guys, for peritoneal dialysis?